in this episode, I'm excited to tell you about and do a review of what, of a new product that just came out that will be exactly like what a old style tequila would have been like if you tried it back in the old, old days. Right here on the Tequila Hombre, coming up next. Welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre, where today we're taking a look at a special product, a special spirit that just came out that um, I've been uh, granted access to, to tell you guys about, and maybe offer you guys a special offering on this. Matter of fact, we will be doing a special offering on this, um, because this is really exciting, and I, and I hope you guys get excited about it, this stuff as much as I am excited about tasting it and, and reviewing it and telling you about it, because this is what a tequila would have tasted like. Have you had it back in the old, old days before it got so industrialized? So let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about this special agave spirit. All right, so the spirit we're going to be talking about today is from La Luna uh, Mezcal. It is a Mezcal Ancestral. I know you guys are going, oh, Mezcal, it's going to be smoky. That's not necessarily true. Okay, so this particular bottle, this particular um, spirit was made the way old style tequila was made. And the only reason why it's not being called tequila is because it was certified by the CRM and not the CRT. So this had it been made by a distillery that's certified by the CRT could be certified as tequila because it follows all the guidelines needed for a tequila in tequila production. But instead it's, it's called the Mezcal because of the way um, it was certified through the CRM. They weren't able to certify it through the CRT because uh, the CRT does not allow any Mezcal producers to certify tequila. So this, the production on this is really interesting and really exciting. So let's get into the production details next. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is how they cook the agaves, um, because this is different than what you're used to seeing with brick ornos or autoclaves with steam pumped in from a commercial um, boiler. Instead, what they do is they dig a big oven in the ground, a conical oven in the ground. They then place three types of wood down in the bottom of this to use as fuel for creating the heat for cooking the agave. They have pine wood, avocado tree wood, and oak. And they, they lay this wood down in the bottom of, of the pit and they set it on fire. And then they lay volcanic rock down on top of the wood. So this wood that's on fire will heat up this volcanic rock and get it to really hot temperatures. Now volcanic rock will hold heat for a while. That's one of the reasons why they use it. And it will provide the heat that's needed for cooking the agave. So once they get the rock to temperature, normally it's like red hot. They then will lay pencas uh, that they had taken from when they trimmed the agave on top of the the hot lava, the hot lava rocks, the hot volcanic rocks, and it forms a barrier between the very hot rocks and the um, the pina, pinas itself. So then, after they stack the pinas up on top of it, and of course the, the pinas are chopped and the bittering parts are taken out, um, they stack it on top, and then once they get the all the Pina pieces and stuff stacked on top of the the pencas. They then cover it with palm leaves, and this will start to form a barrier for them to keep the heat in and to and allow this um, heat that's coming from the the volcanic rock to cook the agave. And after they put the palm leaves on top, they then cover it with dirt, and so they end up forming this big mound that comes out of the ground that's filled with um, these pinas that are being cooked by the heat being produced by these volcanic rocks. All right, so once they have this mound covered with dirt, they let it, they let the agaves roast for five days. After five days, they then uncover this mound and let the agave kind of cool down a little bit because they have to handle it. So then once after the, after the agave is cooled down and they can handle it, they then take the, the cooked agave pieces, the pinas that are cooked, beautiful cooked agave, and they put it in a wood chipper to then turn it into fiber. So they can have what they call bigasso, which is the, the fiber that they use um, for normally like key production. They, they crush it to get the sugars and stuff out of it. They don't crush it. In, instead, they use a wood chipper to shred it, the fibers, and then they place these fibers in two hammock-like um, cloth 
vessels. And they take these vessels and they, they use them to squeeze juice out of the agave fibers to start. Okay, so once they squeeze whatever juice they can out of the agave fibers, they let that start fermenting naturally on its own. Okay, so while they're doing that, they take the, the fibers and they place them into a thousand liter pine vats. And then they, they so that they put the agave fibers into these vats and they fill it with water from a local well water and allow those to ferment on their own as well because there's still sugars in these fibers. So the yeast will still go crazy and it will still ferment and extract the, um, the sugars out of these fibers and turn it into alcohol through fermentation. They then let this ferment for 10 days because the agave has got, the yeast has got to get into the fibers and get the sugars and stuff out. And so they let it go for 10 days until fermentation is complete. So once fermentation is complete, they then take the juice and the fibers and transfer it to clay pots to start distillation. Now this is double distilled, so they do two distillations with it. On the second distillation, they do four cuts. Okay, so with the four cuts, they separate them into different parts. So the first part of the body is called the cuerpo, and they also have the puntas, which is the heads, and then they have what's called the uh, colas doces, or the sweet tails. So they take these, the they take the heads, uh, the puntas, they take the cuerpo, the body, and they take the uh, cola doces or the sweet tails and they blend them together to, to make this spirit. And it is um, done at 50.1% alcohol by volume. So 100.2% 100.2 proof. All right. So this proof was this, this um, batch was proofed at 50.1% uh, 100.2 proof. Uh, for a reason. And I'm going to read to you the notes that I've gotten on this. He says, this is our annual per Peridas y Patria uh, that pays homage to the September 16th and the Mexican Independence Day. Um, Maquina 501 is a train that has been recognized by songs and ballads uh, due to its influence on the victorious revolution for Mexico. During that era and time, trains were the main form of transport for many things, including weapons, Makina 501 is one of the trains that was stolen by Pancho Villa uh, to, amongst other things, transport weapons to his fellow revolutionaries to equip them with the ammo and arms necessary to secure the victory for Mexico. This batch is done with respect and pride for them and for the mentality of doing what is necessary. In a moment of calling Adrian Gallego, Salvador Chavez's brother, co-producer and partner for La Luna, Mezcal, holds Makina 501 close to his heart as it influences his overall efforts. He asked to profile this specific batch to 50.1 ABV as a true testament to Mexican history and the history of Mezcal. There you go. That sounds like great stuff, right? All right, so by going through all these processes, you're probably wondering, well, what does this mean to us as a consumer? What it means is mas sabor, or more flavor. And that really excites me. I love good tequila that takes me on a journey. And you've seen me go crazy over tequilas that I've tasted. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the tasting portion of this mezcal, which is really like a really ancestral tequila, and see what it's all about. All right, I'm really excited about trying this. So again, just for reference, you know, this is a La Luna Mezcal Ancestral, 100% um, agave tequiliana. It is uh, Parandas X Patria. Parandas X Patria Special Edition. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be an exclusive batch for Ferment and Still, so you can only get this on Ferment and Still. <clears throat> um, so let's get in the tasting portion and see what we got going on here. So we'll pour a little bit in the glass. I'm really excited. This is gonna be. I'm sure this is gonna be good. Stuff like this excites me. I love. I love when a tequila can deliver uh, more flavor, more flavor, and a, and a, a nice flavor journey. So I, I need to acclimate my mouth to this when we do the tasting portion because this is gonna be 50.1%. It's it's gonna be up there. It's, gonna be, it's, a, it's a high proof. So looking at this in the glass. It is limited production too, so there's only a limited quantity of it. Coats the glass beautifully. Look, it's not even starting to break it. Oh, there it goes. Legs and tears are starting to come down now. So it's gonna have a nice viscous 
oily mouthfeel to it. Looking at the mezcal itself, it is crystal clear. Looks amazing. Now, don't forget, tequila was once called vino de mezcal de tequila. So wine of the mezcal from tequila. So look at that. That looks beautiful. Oh my gosh. We taste with our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. So let's get to the nosing part and see what we get on the nose on this. <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. It smells really good. Okay, so I'm getting a um, leather earthiness from it. Hints of the cinnamon and baking spices from the cooked agave. Almost like a tart fruit, like grapefruit notes to it coming from it as well. It smells really nice. It smells really good. Maybe a little hint of banana in there as well. So almost like a tropical fruit, tart fruit, um, nice leather earthiness to it as well. Mm, it smells really, really good. All right, so let's see what we get on the flavor profile, but of course... I'm going to need to acclimate my mouth to 50% alcohol, so just give me a second. Once my mouth starts settling down. All right, we're clear. <laughs> Salud. Coats the mouth beautifully. It starts out with a nice earthy leather note to it. Followed by ripe cooked agave. So definitely getting some cinnamon and baking spices in there as well. <clears throat> little hint of like grapefruit, some banana, and even some tart berries, like almost like um, like raspberry notes in there as well. I love the way the cooking in the in the conical oven just really enhances and creates different flavor profiles for this. So this isn't gonna taste like your typical tequila. And it may take you a second to get acclimated to it, but it has got a very nice flavor profile to it. <clears throat> now, as, as my palate's acclimating to it, I'm getting really more of this beautiful cinnamon and baking spices from the cooked agave. The tart fruit's still in there, like grapefruit. Nice, still has that nice earthy leather, leathery kind of um, note coming from it as well. <clears throat> really nice. <clears throat> and you start getting some more of these um, tart fruits coming up into your head, like grapefruit, uh, tart citrus. Uh, this is really nice. This is a really nice ancestral tequila. One of the best ancestral tequilas, or it's a mezcal, but ancestral tequila style mezcal. Um, that I've had. It's beautiful. It's really good. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Keep in mind, it's a different flavor profile than tequila. It's going to have a lot different flavors than what you're used to, but it really enhances and really makes the agave, the Weber Blue Agave, shine. It's not as, as bland as some of the tequilas out there, so you're going to get a lot more flavor in this, uh, but it's definitely beautiful and something I could definitely sip and enjoy with a nice cigar. A nice stogie. Mm. And the more I sip it, the better it's getting. I'm going to pour a little bit more. This is really good. Mm. Wonderful flavors coming from this. So if you're somebody that's liked like the Siembra Valles Ancestral, 
You're going to love this. This blows that stuff out of the water. It blows any other ancestral tequilas that are on the market out of the water. Just so much wonderful flavor. Nice, um, nice high proof to it too, which just gives you even more and more flavor to it. Highly recommend it. I'm going to give this one five agave. Congratulations, uh, Salvador. You did a great job on this. This is fantastic. Um, I hope you guys pick up a bottle and try it. If you do, comment below and let me know when you do and tell me what you think. This is absolutely beautiful. So if you like the information I shared in this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and give it a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. Make sure you click that subscribe button right there and the notification bell next to it so you can get notified every time I post a new review like this or informational video that can help you, guide you on your journey to better tasting tequilas and even uh, mezcals and even some uh, beautiful ancestral style um, ancestral tequila style mezcals like this one here, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to buy more bottles too. Um, it's going to be wonderful. And like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila or mezcal. And if you like ancestral tequila or you want to explore what a really good ancestral tequila tastes like, make sure you pick up the La Luna Paridas Paridas X Patria Ancestral 100% agave tequiliana from Ferment and Still. Salute, guys. Bye.